Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is a Magic Book Review. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. It's Friday. That's right, it's Friday. How do you know it's Friday? Because I'm holding a book. I am holding a magic book. On Fridays, I review magic books. On Mondays, I review playing cards. The rest of the week, I review magic tricks. And once a month, I do giveaways. There's nobody else. Sure, some, some people review cards only. Some people review magic only. Some people review books only. And some of them, some of them do giveaways. I do it all. I do it all. So why have you not hit like? Why have you not hit subscribe? Hit that subscribe button. Let me know that you appreciate what I do. Before you shell out 60 bucks for another beautiful, gorgeous, awesome magic book that sits on your shelf or anything, make sure you come back here, watch a review and see if it's right for you. Today, we're gonna look at parlor tricks from Reese Morgan and Robert West. Now, of course, you know them as Morgan and West, the time traveling Victorian magicians, right? They're awesome, they're a comedy duo, they're a ton of fun, they're so great to watch, their performances are awesome. You've probably seen them on television several times, right? Uh, they have a book out, Parlor Tricks, right? Published by Vanishing Inc. I purchased mine for 60 bucks at penguinmagic.com. And of course you can find it wherever quality magic books are sold. It's a hardbound book, full color, 356 pages, 206 photographs, plus it comes with a full color video, right? You can watch the full performance. They're gonna go through an entire parlor act. You get the entire parlor act in written form, also known as books, <laughs> and you get to watch it in video as well. The video is uh, an hour and a half-ish, and uh, it's a great companion piece so that you can watch the tricks, you know exactly how they go, but then you can turn to the book, find out how they're done, and you get to read all the behind the scenes. It's like having a Morgan and West director's commentary, uh, and you get to read the script right along with them. Uh, you, you get all the nuance, you get all the backstage stuff, you're gonna get all the tips, tricks, notes, and tons of essays, tons of extra stuff. Are you excited? Are you excited? I can't hear you. Well, of course I can't hear you. This is a recorded video. Let's talk about parlor tricks from Morgan and West. All right, so the first thing you need to know about the video is it's just a full performance, okay? It's an hour and a half. There's no magic explanations in it. They're not talking to the camera. They are talking to the audience that is paid to see them. And you will get to see the entire thing, the entire thing from beginning to end. It's beautifully shot, beautifully cut together, beautifully edited, but it's a great video. It's a great video. And I loved being able to watch the tricks, pause when I needed to, go to the book, tear it open, and uh, begin to look, begin to read, right? Look at all the stuff, soak all the knowledge in, go back to the video, start again. Of course, you can do it your own way. That's how I did it. I kind of did both at the same time. Sometimes I'd have the book open and I would read the script right along with them as they were speaking. So it's a wonderful companion piece, either one for the other or the other for the one. So I'm just gonna go through the book trick by trick, essay by essay, as if you are reading it too, and explain exactly what tricks are included. The first trick is called restarting bottle. This is their take on the multiplying wine bottles trick. And this is where they establish themselves as time traveling magicians. The next trick is called mirror mirror. It's a companion piece to the instant costume change. Uh, their book ended effects where they introduce the fact that the mirrors or the pictures that are on the wall are dressed just like them, but later in the show, uh, they show you that they've actually changed their costumes without you noticing. The next one is called a moment of impossibility. A spectator is selected, they select and sign a card, and it goes back inside the box, and the tuck is even given a fresh tuck seal. A small window is then cut out with an X-Acto knife in the tuck case, and in an instant, the deck is magically inserted into a solid glass jar where they can see their card and signature through the jar, but they can't remove the deck and they get to keep everything as a souvenir. 
After this, you get two essays that follow, one on surprise and another on scripting. The next effect is called the impossible ring on ribbon. And uh, they actually taught us this trick at MagiFest. A spectator who is wearing a ring comes up on stage. Their ring is thrown into a bowl of rings. A paper bag is introduced and brought out. The top of the mouth of the bag is threaded with a ribbon and needle, thus closing the top of the bag. A handful of rings are inserted into the bag. The spectator on the count of three pulls the ribbon free and their ring is found threaded to the ribbon. Next after this is an essay called Removing the Cards from a Card Trick, because basically the preceding trick was uh, how you, you, you'd thread a ribbon through a card, but they just removed the card from that trick and thus made it a more interesting trick. The next effect is a very long piece. It's called Intrasensory Perception. This is a trick done with the five senses, and uh, they have five spectators up on stage, and each spectator represents one of the senses. So with sight, the magician guesses how many cards are cut from a stack, and they are right. And then after that, they are blindfolded to thus remove their sight. The next trick is for hearing, and the magician, blindfolded, now guesses the age and birth date of the spectator. Then the magician's ears are plugged, removing their sense of hearing. And the next example is on smell. This is done with a tube up the magician's nose. The spectator blows into the other end of the tube and the magician guesses what the spectator ate for breakfast. Then the magician's nose is clamped, removing the sense of smell. And the next two tricks are touch and taste. With touch, the magician touches the pulse of a spectator, does a small reading and guesses their profession. And then with the last one with taste, this is a serial number reveal where a borrowed dollar is wiped on his tongue. After this, there's a essay on humility and vulnerability. The tricks pick back up again with knowing the unknowable. This is an effect, which is basically a nest of boxes routine where different spectators are invited up on stage to hold a box. At the end of 30 seconds, the remaining spectator, who Morgan and Wes could not have known would be holding the box, the boxes are all opened, nesting upon nesting upon nesting inside, and the last box inside reveals an envelope that describes the remaining spectator and it reveals an extra piece of information about them. After the intermission, they come back with an essay on theatrical design, and the first trick is called Thought of Cards Across. There's 10 cards, 10 black, 10 red. Morgan and West each hold their color respectively. The spectator thinks of one card from one of the colors and it magically flies from one stack to the other. The next essay is called The Evolution of a Card Trick. And then the next trick is called Nobody Trusts Magicians, which is basically a cups and balls routine done with water in three colored cups. I thought this was funnier than the audience because I noticed that this is secretly an inside joke about multiple outs and equivocate. The next essay is called Writing the Audience into the Trick, and the other essay after that is called Variety and Pacing. The next trick is called the Permanent Linking Rings. With the magician's thumbs tied, two separate rings are thrown at him. They pass through his tied thumbs and link together. The following essay is called Unanswered Questions, and the next trick is called the 40-digit hyperbrain act. This is both a magic square slash math slash memorization act, and the essay that follows is called Predictions and Tricks with No Middle. The last trick, the finale, is called The Miraculous Escape of Mr. West, and it is a mailbag escape done while the spectator who is holding the mouth of the bag is blindfolded. The last essay is called Danger and Magic. That's a lot, that's a lot. That was a lot for me to say, it's a lot for you to read. That means it's a great book because there's a lot for you to take in. There is a lot in this book. Now, let me preface this by saying, this is a little late in the video for a preface because a preface should come first. Uh, so let me index this by saying, uh, this is not a book. I know, you're shocked, you're agape, your mouth is, wide open with wonder. This is not a book. This is, okay, this is not a magic book, okay? This is not a magic book where you just scroll to any random chapter and read a card trick or a rope trick or a coin trick. This book is a compendium of this act from beginning to end. The essays honor the trick that preceded it. 
So you are really diving in to Morgan and West's brain, in theory, right? And, and really soaking in this entire act. Like I said, it's full script, full patter, full blocking, full staging for everything that happens, whether it's seen or unseen, you get all the work. So even in one trick while you're reading it, you will leap out for a second because they'll show you during this trick, we are doing something for the next trick and, and they'll insert it so that you, while you read it, you are literally following them step by step through an entire parlor and stage act. It's also a beautiful example of how you take classic standards and make them your own brand, right? Nobody would suspect that they did a three card money routine. Nobody would suspect that they did the linking rings. Nobody would suspect that they did the multiplying bottles act, right? But they did, they did, but they made it their own. So this book is a great example of all the work that goes into a full show and it's a great example of finding your own voice. Now, are you gonna perform these tricks? I don't know. I mean, maybe, uh, but you're not Morgan and West, right? You're not them, and you're probably not a two-person parlor act either. And these tricks really are written in their voice, with their jokes, and done for two magicians. So I think that's not even the premise of why the book was written right? The book was written to show you what goes into a parlor act and of course show you how standards that we all know can get transformed into something new. Even the mailbag escape is an old trick, right? It's an old trick. You've seen it done, but you haven't seen Morgan and West do it. And so I would hope that buying a book like this shows you what goes into a parlor act, shows you the detail work that goes into making something excellent right? Because there's a lot of great and good parlor acts out there. But how do you get it to excellent? It's a great example of that. It's a great example of branding, of making something your own, right? I think that's the reason you would buy this book. And because you're huge fans of Morgan and West, like me, those are the reasons you would buy this book. All right, that's everything I can say. If you'd like to learn more about Morgan and West, you can find them on the Instagram at Morgan and West. You can also visit their website, which is morganandwest.co.uk. I purchased my book with my own money from penguinmagic.com, and you can purchase it wherever quality magic tricks are sold. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye. But wait, are you not getting enough magic orthodoxy in your life? Not getting enough of your very favorite magic reviews? Good news. You can join this channel. That's right. You can join Magic Orthodoxy for only $1.99 a month. $1.99 gives you access to eight brand new videos every single month. Eight. Eight new videos that are unseen by the rest of the world. You will have exclusive access to them. Plus, if you join right now for a buck ninety-nine, you'll get access to over a hundred videos that are already in the membership section. That's right. A hundred videos. What kind of content? Even more magic videos. Top 10 lists. Best of the year head-to-head -head magic tricks, and my exclusive thoughts on performance and theory. Two extra videos every single week, $1.99. Just scroll down to where it says Magic Orthodoxy. There's a button next to it that says Join. Click the Join button, and it'll walk you through a series of menus that'll hook you up and get you access today.